Hi, Sarah Bingham here. All right, this is the GAPS diet and I wanna prep you with some of the, well, here's your top seven challenges that I see all the time with my clients. Uh, first one is, oh, Sarah, I blew it. You know, I, I, I messed up with the diet because I, I came home, I was famished and there just wasn't food right there for me to eat. And that is a big problem. And I want you to know that um, <laughs> one of my 13th commandment is thou shalt not leave home without food. You've got to always have food with you. You've got to have your thermoses with you. You've got to have your broth with you. And you've got to have food quick at home, even if it's frozen veggies and some frozen leftover meat. You can throw those in a pan, put some water in there, heat it up in no time, and done. You've got some food that you can eat. But you never, ever, ever want to be low on food. So when you cook, cook massive amounts so that you always have something to eat. All right, challenge number two. Um, <laughs> I call it freaking out. Okay, the first three days can be tough. And if you, um, some people just go, oh my gosh, this is terrible. I, I feel horrible, how can I do this? You've just gotta know that you gotta stay the course or your child looks like they're dying. Your child has decided to go on a complete food strike. That child hasn't eaten anything in like two days. And I promise you, I've never lost a kid, but to a parent, this is really hard, and often parents fold day two. Hang in there. Day three and day four change, I promise you. And all of a sudden, a kid who has never eaten anything green in his life is asking for seconds on broccoli by day four, five, or six. So it does happen, and their taste buds do change. But you have got to stay uh, loving and peaceful and hold them and tell them, yeah, it's hard, and it's hard for all of us. We're all doing it together, and I do highly recommend that. Uh, at least you do it with your child. Um, and, and just hang in there with them, all right? So this is not a punishment. This is nothing. And you always, with your children, want to put out a smorgasbord of food and let them eat whatever they want to eat. So the first three to five days can be rough. Just hang in there. Don't allow it to throw you off, all right? Third challenge, family resistance. Sometimes moms or dads have to carry the flag themselves because their spouse just doesn't want to go along with it. Um, I, and frankly, if you're dealing with children, don't let the in-laws in in the first two, three days, all right? Because they'll, they'll create more resistance. Just know that you've got to hold the flag, carry on. It's only three to five days that you've got to really hang in there. And then what I usually see is family members, spouses, whatever, they see the difference in you, they see the difference in your children, and they go, wow, okay. And the resistance starts to melt because you cannot deny what's before your face. So that's exciting. Point number four, constipation, a big one. If you have tended toward constipation your whole life, I promise you, you will probably have to deal with that. Now, if you've been using support mechanisms to help you poop every day. We take those away during the GAPS diet, which means that what we're trying to do is get your gut to do it on its own. It does, but it may take enemas, and yes, you have instructions on enemas, and no, they're not as terrible as anyone ever thought. Once you do one, once, I, you know, the first time I did one, I was like, seriously? It's just not that bad. So the instructions are there, and just make sure you've got an enema bag ready to go, and if you haven't pooped today, you've got to give yourself an enema before you take the bath tonight, period. Just, that's it. And I promise you, uh, 99 out of 100 times, it works. Slowly but surely, your gut will come back. Um, the detoxification, often when you are detoxifying too slowly kind of thing, it's like, wow, I'm just not getting over this first stage. Often I find that people have not been doing their baths. So those baths are really important. The detox bath, make sure you stay with it. Um, hungry, Sarah, I'm just hungry a lot. Use winter squash. I lived on butternut squash when I was doing the GAPS diet. I probably went through a whole butternut squash a day. In your manual, I teach you how to do a crock pot baked butternut squash. Now I know everything is supposed to be boiled, but when you bake it in its skin, it is very moist and, and delicious and very sweet. So use your winter squashes um, as a way to 
give you more, uh, feel more satiated, all right? And then um, the whole not enough food, you've got to make sure you've sourced your food, you've got freezers loaded with food so that you never run out. That uh, you've got to have your food with you because there's no place you can go <laughs> to eat. There's no convenience store where you can grab whatever, you know, that's on the gaps. So make sure you always have plenty of food. So those are your seven challenges, and I'll be back with your top three mess ups. <laughs>